Caddis Maximus here again, this time with a review of unique or what I'll call universal hex drivers. These are the three designs I know of so far at an attempt to make universal sockets or universal drivers where you have one socket or one driver that can drive a variety of hex sizes. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm a little OCD with collecting tools as well as making YouTube videos. That's why I finally decided to start a YouTube channel after like three years of people telling me I should start a YouTube channel. Well, as they say, better late than never. Anyway, what your traditional, you know, what you're used to is when you need a socket, you have to get the right socket for the right size set fastener. That's why you have these big arrays of sockets. And of course, they work really great in a variety of situations. Uh, getting into tight spaces. Obviously, if you're driving a tiny little quarter inch fastener, you don't need to be using a huge old three quarter inch socket to do so. But there's a variety of situations which these come in quite in handy when you just don't want to deal with trying to dig up the right size socket and because you know you can just put on this and it'll deal with whatever you need to. Uh, and that would be a pose. Some of these are in screwdriver form, so the similar would be socket or nut drivers. And of course, you need arrays of these for the same reasons. We have three different styles here. We have the Gator Grip socket. I've only ever seen them in this size, although I believe they made some different size Gator Grips. I really wish this style of socket kind of caught on a little more because uh, for some people they've had a lot of issues resting. I put a little oil in there and the line doesn't rust at all. Um, the idea here is they have a whole variety, uh, array of very uh, forged hardened steel pins all on a very complicated spring mechanism in the back where each and every individual pin uh, each and every pin is individually spring-loaded, so I'm sure that made it way more expensive. I can just press on that pin, and it's spring-loaded. So it's not some kind of odd one springs pressing up on all the pins. I believe that there's dozens of little springs inside there, so that's kind of uh, a little bit overkill, but it makes it work well. And the reason is, is because of all these little pins, sometimes you'll get it on and it will slip, and then you can just pull it off and put it on in a different position, and it will just lock up on the fastener. And it seems that those red little round pins kind of act as flank drives, at least on one of the surfaces that you're driving. And this thing actually hasn't slipped that much on me. The huge advantage to this is if I want to run this 3 8 fastener, I don't have to be like right in the middle of the socket. I can be like offset over here which makes driving the socket odd because it's wobbling around, but nonetheless, I don't even have to be right in the middle and I'm able to drive this fastener. Um, as far as universal sockets, unlike spline drives this, if I want to drive a square, I can drive a square very effectively. I have a huge amount of surface area, as you can see, in engagement. Or if I want to actually drive the big hex, I can drive that as well. There are situations where you have those thumb wing nuts and there's various styles and sometimes as you get jammed in there and you're trying to find pliers and stuff to get them out and sometimes they're in a tight spot. This kind of socket's awesome because even if you have some oddball shape like that, you have no issue driving weird little shapes like wing nuts and thumb screws and all that kind of thing. So that makes this have even greater advantage. I don't know if it's deep enough to reach the little wings on this. It isn't. But if it would, we would be able to drive this thing by its wings. And you can just pretty much any shape. Here's a uh, trigger switch from an air wrench or something, some kind of air tool. And if we had a really odd shape like this that we need for some reason to turn and to torque on, we could use this socket. We could just push this switch in there. And then we would be able to turn and torque on this switch. And so I wanted to show that's the advantage to the pin design is it really will drive any shape. It'll drive four, five, six point, eight point sockets. It'll drive a variety of actual spline shafts because of the way the pins will want to fall into some of the slots. It won't drive by all the splines, but it ends up holding pretty tight. So I really did want to talk about the Gator Grip. Some people really don't like it. That's saved me a huge amount of time. Here's our second design, which is actually one of the worst. It's a series of sleeves. So this won't work on both metric and imperial fasteners like these other two. This really only works very well on imperial fasteners. And another disadvantage is if you're offset, it just won't turn it off. So you're constantly kind of pushing it on there until you can get the fastener to really cooperate and get into just the right the push down on just the right sleeve. There we go. And then it will actually drive the fastener. And then the other issue with this system is as you use it, the little sleeves get beat up, then they get stuck to each other, and it becomes uh, less and less useful over time. So this is actually one uh, that I don't actually use. I kind of keep as part of the collection. Uh, but knowing that uh, these aren't, haven't been made for a long time, um, it's more of just a 
discussion tool, conversation piece. Now here's one that Stanley made called the Stanley Hexamatic. And I did I didn't mention in the previous review of all the acetate handles I've ever seen on any type of screwdriver, all the coloring systems. This yellow with the black highlights I think is one of the very best. And the gold color printing, I think that's one of the uh, nicest looking handles. Anyway, so the Stanley Hexamatic is a self-spring-loaded one. It is actually a patented one. Um, these you I've seen these around. They've all been beat up until I ran into this one, which was new in the package, unopened. And this works by having six uh, hardened steel tines in there. Wow, it's kind of hard to see. We'll get a little more light on there. So you can see these six steel tines, and what ends up happening is there's a collar in there. So as you press it onto the fastener, these little tines will come into contact with the face and it'll just automatically get tight and stop when you uh, have reached the fastener size and you can unscrew or screw in the fastener and it's spring loaded so when you let go of it it automatically pops back out. Let's go ahead and show how that might work. So we have a fastener and the idea with the little shelf that's inside there is so that will hit the head of the fastener. You can just press it on and voila it, since this is a 3 8 this only goes up to 7 16 from about quarter inch to 7 sixteenths, but you just press it on and you're able to turn it. Press it on and you're able to turn it. And it's really pretty nice. For some reason, it really seems pretty easy for it to catch onto the flats. It just, the little arcs that are inside the teeth, it just slips if it's um, on one of the high spots and you don't really feel it. And I wanted to say that this one really has worked surprisingly well. And I meant to bring this out in the nut driver review, but this. Uh, as a nut driver is pretty much one of the easiest just because it's so simple just to press it on and turn any type of fastener just like that. Um, although I can see why they're not sold. They, uh, something like this would be quite expensive today. Um, they have a whole, they have like a little spinner ring right here which doesn't seem to do any other purpose than allow you to hold it with your fingers. I don't really understand that. Maybe there's a assembly portion under there but there's just so many little parts that are to this. Uh, I couldn't see this thing really being uh, very cost effective now. It would still be 10 to $20. Uh, particularly one aspect. A lot of people have a lot of screwdrivers and they know you put, they either have a square or some a mushing of two flats like they have here. But it almost seems that you can see inside that they also have splines. There we go, on the end of that shaft. Although I think it's just a discoloring. Because it would seem crazy that they would actually cut splines in addition to the wings. Anyway, I just wanted to bring out this little video, uh, bringing people's attention to attempts at universal uh, sockets or drivers that can adjust a wide range of hex fasteners uh, with just one single tool. And they really are some of the rarest of all the tools that are out there uh, as far as designs because just the nature of the system, you either have a lot of extra cost, machine work, bulk, uh, weight for something that a lot of people aren't going to have uh, a lot of faith in because uh, many situations, yeah, like this gator grip and all these, if you let them get rusty or any of that kind of stuff, then they basically are uh, lost cause. Once again, thank you so much for watching a Caddis Maximus review. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't. We'll see you again next video or talk to you again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't see me yet.